the Rangers flat out dominated the Tampa Bay Rays in a 7-1 to win to take the first two, sweep the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Rangers are moving on in the playoffs. We're going to talk about all that and more in this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cribbingly addicted Texas Rangers fan covering this team for 10 seasons, including all five as the founder and host of Locked On Rangers. Today is Wednesday, October 4th, and your Rangers are advancing to the ALCS. Thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single day. Thing below. Now, before we get into today's episode, this episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper picks, and you could win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app, use promo code Locked On, you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Now, the Rangers won seven to one, and of course, it ended with a little bit of nervousness. And if you've been burned enough by this bullpen, it did. I mean, for for normal people who have not been burned as much as, as, as this Rangers fan base has by this bullpen. It was a little more nerve-wracking than the Rangers would have wanted, but they had their closer on the hill, and he didn't end up allowing a run. Josh Spores didn't end up allowing a run, and Nathan Evoli allowed just one run in his exceptional outing. But the offense, oh my goodness, the offense. It looked like it might be another day like yesterday where the Rangers had a lot of runners in scoring position and a lot of guys left on base. There were still seven runners left on base, but the team went 4-13 with runners in scoring position with some great at-bats from up and down this lineup. I mean, when you look at the depth of this lineup, you have the all-star starting third baseman, Josh Young, hitting eighth in this freaking lineup. And what did he do? Oh, he went three for four with three extra base hits, including a pair of doubles and a triple. Oh, and who do you have in the in the number nine hole? Oh, that's that's just Evan Carter, a guy who has reached base in all but one of his first eight, I believe, played appearances in the postseason. Absolutely incredible. Also had his first career playoff home run. It was an absolute no-doubter. He also walked in this one because, of course, he did. He also got hit by a pitch. He also struck out the first and only time that he has not reached base in his young playoff career. Absolutely sensational outing from him. Everybody in the starting lineup, including Robbie Grossman, got a hit. A couple of hits from Corey Seager, as well as a walk from Corey Seager, which was intentional, because unfortunately, Corey Seager didn't have uh, basically any cover in the lineup behind him. It was hitting Robbie Grossman, who got one single, a little bloop single, and as well as a weak pop-out and a couple of strikeouts, and he uh, should not be hitting in the three-hole. It's not that complicated. It shouldn't be, especially not against a righty. It feels indefensible. It was confusing. And, you know, I, I thought that surely Mitch Garver must be hurt because there's no other reason why Robbie Gross would be hitting in the three hole. Nope. Apparently it's just Bruce Bochy likes him. But you know what? It didn't matter, even though he came up with a runner in scoring position in his first at bat. Corey Seager hit um, a double, which was slightly misplayed by the center fielder, Manuel Margot, whose routes have been very bad in center field so far this year. But the Rangers took advantage of it. They took advantage of bad defense yet again. I know there was only one error in this one, but there could have been quite a few more. But the Rangers played stellar defense. Honestly, yet again, stellar defense. The only error the Rangers had was on a really weak catcher's interference call on a a swing that was looked like a check swing to me. It would have been checked successfully, but it hit Jonah Heim in the glove, and that runner was immediately replaced with a ground into a double play. But this lineup, all the way through and through, coming up big, including Adolis Garcia, his first career playoff home run. I just knew that he was going to get a home run at some point in this these playoffs, and I'm glad it only took two games for him to get his first playoff. I mean, home run. I mean, took just as long as for Evan Carter to get his first career playoff home run. I mean, this lineup, the depth, the intensity, the equality of the at-bats through and through and through. We have seen it time and time again. Guys stepping up throughout this lineup. It doesn't matter if, you know, Marcus Simeon's going to have a one for five day. It doesn't matter if Dolce Garcia is going to go have a one for five day or Nathaniel Lowe or Jonah Himes going to go one for four. Like, is somebody in this lineup is going to go off 
And if they keep passing the baton like they do, keep working these walks, keep working these pitchers, they got Zach Eflin out of there in five innings, five runs off of him, four of them were earned, including both of the home runs hit in this one. They were also aggressive on the base pass. Lily Tavares had a stolen base. Josh Young um, forced a defensive miscue by, or I guess didn't really force it, but took advantage of a defensive miscue by Josh Lowe. Um, Joshua Lowe, however, uh, Wendy Lowe would like us to say her youngest son's name. But he took advantage, and he was aggressive on the base pass. He went all the way to third, and then it didn't really matter if he had just stayed at first base because right after him was Evan Carter's first career home run. This kid is absolutely astounding. I am floored, amazed, beyond belief with what this kid has done in his stint in the big leagues. I knew that he was going to be a very good player eventually. I thought it might be a little a little too early to call him up. But, I mean, with the Adoles Garcia injury, it made sense. There was an opportunity, and he was not going to be expected to be the savior of this team. But, I mean... <laughs> Since he's come up, this Texas Rangers team has done basically nothing but win. Baseball's prospectus thought there were 10 prospects better than Evan Carter at midseason. MLB.com thought there were 7. ESPN thought there were 13 better prospects than Evan Carter. And Baseball America thought there were 5 better. All of them are wrong. There are none better, outside of maybe Wyatt Langford. But no, none of them are doing this on this stage, having this quality of plate appearances, playing this quality of defense, being aggressive on the base. Literally, what else do you want a player to do? You cannot ask for anything more than what you have gotten from your 21-year-old rookie. And he looks like it's just absolutely not phasing them. I mean, some guys will you know, say the right things of, ah, oh, it's just baseball. You know, you play baseball anywhere. It's all the same thing to me. You know, it's, it's not that different in the big leagues or, you know, in the lower minors with him. It doesn't feel like it's just talk. It feels like it's actually true. This kid is so incredibly mature. He knows exactly what's expected of him, and he goes out and does it. He doesn't try to do more than he is asked to do. He is hitting in the nine hole. I wish he would be hitting much higher up, but I get the opportunity to be a, a second leadoff man for your actual leadoff man in, in Marcus Simeon and the guy behind him in Corey Seager makes a lot of sense. I am so incredibly impressed with him. So incredibly impressed with Josh Young, who had been struggling really badly since he came off the IL. That Thumb felt like it was bothering him. He wasn't hitting balls hard. He was expanding the zone a little bit more than he had during the season, which, again, was a decent amount. But in the game that mattered most, the game to clinch it, the game, a, a chance to win their first series since the 2011 ALCS. The Rangers had lost six straight games with a chance to clinch the series. Now, that goes back to, um, well... The series after the 2011 ALCS. So y'all, y'all know what what series that was. But hey, this team is different. They are quite literally constructed differently because there is uh, almost nobody on the act. No, there's definitely nobody on this active roster that was there in 2011. There's not a whole lot of players that are active in Major League Baseball that were on that team. But this team has no fear. They have a fearless leader in Bruce Bochy, while his number three hole hitter replacement. Uh, causes me great angst and confusion the hold he has on this team the putting the right finger on the scale the the right moves the, having the pulse of this team keeping their heads on straight is absolutely sensational beyond belief and i am so incredibly happy that he is the skipper of this team because without him this team would have fallen off the rails many many moons ago coming up we're going to look at nathan Iovaldi's incredible start and why this is just the beginning for your Texas Rangers in this new winning era. But first, this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Sleeper. The MLB playoffs are here, which means the clock is ticking to ch win a chance on uh, a chance to win 100 times your money on, on daily fantasy baseball. Baseball has never been more exciting than it is now with studs like Evan Carter, like Josh Young, like Corey Seager, and like Nathan Eovaldi. So pick stats like more or less on these stats like home runs, hits, strikeouts, and more for up to a 100 times payout on Sleeper. Get your picks right and you could win big. If you're thinking that... Corey Seager is going to go off in the ALDS against the Baltimore Orioles. And then you can go make your picks there. Use promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's Terms of Use for details. 
Shout out to the aviators for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. On tomorrow's show, I'll be breaking down a little bit more of a big picture of this series and maybe later on in the week doing a crossover with Locked On Orioles. Rangers take on the Orioles this weekend in the ALDS. You can catch every pitch on the hometown broadcast on Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers. Now, this Rangers pitching staff, they reliably had basically three pretty good starters that you felt pretty darn good about. You had Jordan Montgomery, who was sensational in the first game of the series. And then you had Nathan Eovaldi, who hadn't quite been the same since coming off injury. Now, his velocity was mostly back in his most recent start, his final start of the regular season, but he got absolutely lit up by the Seattle Mariners. So everyone just kind of ran with the fact that, oh, nope, he's never going to get his velocity back. He is doesn't have his stuff at all. It's, it's nowhere close. But you look closely at that last start. Seattle just hit him well. They they just did, and sometimes that happened. Even when he did have his good stuff, sometimes that just happens. But Nathan Eovaldi, his stuff looked exceptionally back in this one. The fastball averaged 94.9 miles an hour. The yearly average is down to 95.1, which, you know, was as a result of the last, like, three or four starts. Those weren't nearly, nearly as many pitches, so that average isn't dragged down nearly as much. But the splitter was right at where it was before. I mean, the curveball cutter, both of those were right around the split speeds they were before. And he looked absolutely dominant in this one. He was painting his spots. He had a few pitches early on that were middle-middle that he thought, okay, I don't know if, if the command is really quite back yet, but then he settled into it. The Rangers gave him some cushion, and he went to work. He absolutely went to town on these Rays hitters. Unfortunately, he couldn't finish out the shutout. He had, I believe, around 78 pitches when he was in the heading into that seventh inning, which is, I believe, where he finished six and two-thirds innings, six hits, no walks, which is the E of all the way, no home runs, also the E of all the way, eight strikeouts, eight strikeouts, because he was getting all kinds of swings and misses, 16 swings and miss, 16 swings and misses, 31 called strikes plus whiffs, absolutely excellent in this one and he did not give this Rays lineup a chance. This is this is a good Rays lineup and the Rays couldn't do much of anything in this one. Like just not much of anything at all in this one, in the last game, and uh well that's it because the Rangers are moving on. And the Rangers really needed to win this game. I mean it's it sounds weird to say that it's a must win when it's a three game series and you already up one nothing, but the Rangers would have to have pitched Dane Dunning on short rest in game three. And, um, you know, you were hoping you didn't have to use too much of your top end bullpen arms. Well, the Rangers barely had to use any bullpen arms at all because they got this length out of Nathan Eovaldi. Josh Spores pitched an inning at third. And then Jose Leclerc, of course, finished it off with a couple of hits and stranded two runners in scoring position with a strikeout, a called strike three on a borderline pitch at the bottom of the zone but he got the call on a full count to send this team on to the next round this is a dangerous team that is peaking at the absolute right time this is a team that has been one of the best in baseball for the entire season did people forget about that did people forget that this team still has all the players that were kicking everyone's butts left right and center for the first three months of the season heck the first Three and a half months, because until the midway point of August, this team was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. This was a a team that had a Pythagorean record of 96 wins. This is one of the best teams in baseball. They were significantly better than I think everybody else in the AOS, but they didn't get the job done because they stumbled down the stretch and they lost the division on the last day. That's a fact. And you know what? It, It meant that they had to go all the way to Tampa Bay fly as far across the United States as you can fly, at least the contiguous United States as you could fly, especially between two baseball stadiums, professional MLB baseball stadiums. Um, And everyone thought, oh no, this team is losing its cool. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they actually celebrated making a playoff spot on Saturday. Wow, that's why they were hungover on Sunday. No, that wasn't the case. And I hope those people keep that same energy of, oh, wow, how dare they party today? They've only got two days off before the ALDS. No, party your freaking butts off. This, everything else to this point is 
gravy. This is what the season, this, this is a, one of the best cases scenarios for this season. It's really complicated because there have been so many injuries, but a lot of things have gone really, really right for this team. Adoles Garcia being everything you could have hoped for and then some. Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager having phenomenal seasons. Jonah Heim being an all-star. Josh Young being an all-star. I mean, Nathan Eovaldi staying healthy most of the year and being healthy when it matters most and Dane freaking Dunning leading your team in innings pitched at 172 and two thirds with a sub four ERA like so many things have gone right for this team and now they go up against the Baltimore Orioles team that did win 100 games but they've been sitting for a while they quenched the division like I think 10 days ago, it's been a while since they may had to play some really, really competitive games. Now they have been very good in those close games. A lot of the things that the Rangers don't do well as in have an amazing bullpen and, you know, come back late and win close games. That's something that the Baltimore Orioles do really well. But even if the Rangers lose, I mean, you're, you're going to get knocked out by a 100 win Baltimore Orioles team. That is really freaking good. And they are also seem to be peaking at the right time and have been incredibly consistent all year long. But the Rangers made it to the playoffs. They beat the 99-win Tampa Bay Rays. They are going on to the next round. And you should celebrate and feel good about this team. The pitching staff is clicking at the right time. I mean, this gym, Nathan Eovaldi, he just comes up when the Rangers need him most every single time. Now, it would have been nice if he could have come up in that Friday game, but that to clinch the division, but it didn't matter. Honestly, it feels like this Rays team is so busted up, so broken and battered that, I mean, the Rangers might've actually, might've actually done better facing off against this team, even though there was such a big travel, uh, a, tra- a, a long, long travel day, but the Rangers took that day off. Bruce Bochy knows how to get his team ready. And now you head into the, the ALDS on a two game winning streak after throttling these Rays in these two games. I know it was only a combined, what, 11 to 1 score uh, between the two games, but it felt so much more than that. It could have been so much more than that, even in this one. But this freaking team never, ever quits. That that Jeff Bannister mentality of never, ever quit, that's, that's this squad. That's way more fitting about the Texas Rangers in 2023 than it ever was in 2015 or 2016. Nathan Eovaldi came up when the Rangers lost Jacob deGrom. He came up with a complete game when the bullpen was the most devastated it's ever been in a must-win game. And he came up when the Rangers needed him most time in and time out. He beat these Rays twice in the regular season, and he beat them once in the playoffs, he is looking like the best version of his freaking self. I cannot believe that he is just the number two starter because Jordan Montgomery was absolutely exceptional. And if the Rangers keep on, you know, getting this, whatever seems like half, half decent news from Max Scherzer, he did have a setback on Sunday. So we'll see if he can get back. If, if, if the Rangers make it to the ALCS or make it to the World Series and Max Scherzer joins your staff and he's your number three starter in a set best of seven series, either God forbid against the Astros in the ALCS or against whoever it is in the world series. I mean, look at world because Bruce Bochy might be getting ring number four. This is such a fun series. And you know what? Even if it, do, even if it goes off the rails in the ALDS, which it might, but I don't really care at this point. This is just the beginning for this Texas Rangers team. Coming up, we're going to look at why. But first, this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Bunches. Okay, Locked On Rangers fans, you may have heard us talk about the free new app just for sports fans called Bunches. Bunches is the new social network built for sports fans. No politics, no doom and gloom, unless you're Yankees fans, just sports. They've recently released a new scoreboard feature that lets you check live scores in the app and chat about live games as they happen. You can chat about the Rangers as they are crushing everyone en route to a World Series win, or, you know, we'll see how far they go. Or you can also so go join the Locked On Bunch by clicking the link in the show notes and description to get the app or go to the App Store, the Apple App Store, and download Bunches right now. Download the Bunches app today, and when you do, our friends at Bunches have the featured have featured the Locked On MLB Bunch in the Discover tab. You can also click the link in the description and show notes to join the Locked On MLB Bunch community today. 
shout out to the Avid Aviators for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day on Friday. Shall be trying to get a, in a crossover with Connor Newcomb of Locked On Orioles to preview this ALDS series. The Rangers take on the Orioles this weekend. You can catch every pitch with the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers. Now, this has been a great season. It's not done yet by any means. The Rangers have, at the fewest, three more playoff games. Hopefully, they'll have a whole lot more and a whole lot more wins. But this is just the beginning for this Texas Rangers squad. This was the first year under Bruce Bochy. This is the first year under Chris Young. This is the first year of Evan Carter who is very much going to be a face of this franchise moving forward, as is Josh Young, as is Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, Nathaniel Lowe, Jonah Heim, Leone Tavares, Adolis Garcia. I mean, these guys are here to stay for the long long term. I mean, Mitch Garver is the only one of these frequent hitters that is not going to be on this team for sure next year. Well, not under contract for next year, I should say. And, oh, By the way, they've got another absolute stud 21-year-old coming up probably next year in Wyatt Langford. So this offense that was the best in the American League, it could get even better next year. But this team, getting these young players this experience is huge. This is Josh Young's first season. He's 25, he's a little old for rookie because of some unfortunate injuries that have derailed him the last three years, which is really frustrating. If he didn't have that stupid thumb injury, he might end up being rookie of the year and the Rangers might get an extra draft pick out of it. But I digress. He is still an incredibly talented rookie. He still started the all-star game this year. He might start the thing next year. They've got Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager signed for the long term. They are going to be here for a long, long time. They've got Max Scherzer, who's coming back at some point next year, assuming he doesn't come back too early and injure himself this year, which I don't think is going to happen. Nathan Eovaldi is going to be here next year. Dane Dunning is going to be here for another three years. John Gray is going to be here next year as well. And, well, I sure as shoot hope they bring back Jordan Montgomery next year because he has been sensational. And uh, this team, I know they might not make the playoffs every year for the entirety of Evan Carter and Josh Young's Texas Rangers tenure. That's not the most realistic expectation to have, but, I mean, this lineup is not quite as good as the Braves, but has been in spurts, and they are also equally as locked down as the Braves. This this lineup in the infield is going to be here for at least the next three seasons, I believe. Maybe it's two more seasons on Nathaniel Lowe, and then you'll make a decision on, on that if they extend him or whatever, but the outfield looks like it's pretty well locked down. Adoles Garcia is going to be here for at least three more seasons, or at least he's under contract for at least three more seasons. Leo Tavares is under contract for another, what, I believe four or five seasons. Evan Carter's got like six years left on this team, and Wyatt Langford's service clock hasn't even freaking started. I mean, the future is so incredibly bright, and getting this experience in year one with these guys is is phenomenal. You still have the prime of Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager. Remember how a lot of people said when the Rangers signed Marcus Simeon to that seven-year deal? Ugh, Marcus Simeon's going to be old and, and washed by the time the Rangers start competing and winning. Well, it took one season of bad baseball um, in between that and Marcus Simeon being 32 at his freaking peak, leading the league in runs scored, leading the league in hits, having 100 RBIs from the leadoff spot, 40 doubles, 4 triples, 29 homers, and 14 stolen bases, along with a 826 OPS. Oh, and by the way, he's probably the best defensive second baseman in all of freaking baseball. Corey Seager, Having the season of his dreams, hitting 327, 390, 623 with an OPS over 1,000, and 33 bombs and 42 doubles, which led the freaking league, even though he missed 43 games. I mean, this freaking team is good. People forget that. We forget that as Rangers fans, but look at the body of work from this year. Look at how many of these hitters are so darn good. Look at how many people were on the all-star team and how many more people could have been on the all-star team. I mean, heck, Leody Tavares and Ezekiel Duran with their first half numbers, they had very strong all-star cases. In fact, Leody Tavares had a higher war than Julio Rodriguez in the first half. He really did. 
and he had a lot more impressive hitting stats because Julio Rodriguez was kind of mid in the first half. But I know there are other teams in the division that are set up for the long haul and, um, you know, maybe Mariners GM talking about how actually going for it really hard every single year is, is not good. We're actually going for winning about 40, 54% of the time. What an incredibly boneheaded thing to say in your depressing season-ending press conference to talk about your team not actually trying that hard. Well, the Rangers are trying very hard, and they are going to keep being aggressive. They're going to be aggressive in free agency this offseason as well. I think signing Jordan Montgomery has got to be at the top of your list if it's not signing Shohei Otani, because if you can get Shohei Otani, then please, God, go get Shohei Otani. But literally nobody knows what that guy wants and who he's going to sign with outside of him and maybe his close friends and family. Even then, I don't know that even he even knows what he wants at this point and he'll figure it out at some point but jordan montgomery has been incredible nathan Eovaldi has been incredible this lineup has been absolutely incredible oh and by the way jose leclerc at the exact right time i know that there was a double that he gave up but he didn't give up a single run didn't walk anybody got a couple of strikeouts to close out this series and send the texas freaking rangers to the next round you think they're going to pick up his six and a half ish million dollar option next year? Yeah, I think that's a gosh darn certainty. But oh my goodness, this team. Uh, look at where they were just last year and how far this team has come. I mean, the offensive leap that they made. Last year, they were a pretty good offensive team and they had mostly the same lineup. I mean, they still had Jonah Heim, Nathaniel Lowe, Marcus Simeon, Corey Seeger, um, Leo Tavares, Adoles Garcia. Like, it was still pretty much that same lineup, but just across the board, massive leaps from each and every one of those hitters and massive leaps from what they did in the off season of buying like an entirely new rotation. You think they're not going to do that again next year? Because who knows when Jacob Agram is going to be back? You think maybe it'll be mid season. Maybe it'll be a little bit later. You're just kind of hoping that he is healthy for the playoffs so that, I mean, I'm just imagining a playoff Jacob deGrom start, uh, oh my goodness, it is, it would be something of beauty, um, but I mean, the Rangers are going to need to keep being aggressive, spending in free agency, I mean, we'll, we'll see what pitchers come up and could be helping it, it, from the farm this time next year, we could see Jack Leiter um, maybe making, knocking on the door or making his big league debut, we could see Owen White um, if that fastball velocity returns, but like, you got to go get some proven commodities. Jordan Montgomery is it. This team loves Jordan Montgomery, I feel like. I mean, it, just looking at how they celebrate with him, looking at how he celebrated that walking off the mound after seven innings of just screaming. Like, we have not seen that much emotion from the big, tall lefty. And I absolutely would love to have him for the long term, having a guy who has that track, track record of durability with so many starters that, have not been able to stay healthy. I mean, that would be really freaking nice. But I I am so impressed by this team. I am so impressed by the winning, the mental fortitude, the gumption, the gall, the I'm going to forget what bad ha the bad things that happened to me and just remember that I'm really good at this sport that I've been really good at for a long time and go kick these guys' butts. And that's what they freaking did. They did not let up. They stomped the life out of this Rays team. They took advantage of every miscue and made very few themselves. They are a team that will not beat themselves on the bases, on defensively, at the plate. Like, this is just a super well-disciplined, well-organized machine of a baseball team and I am so happy that they are my team like oh, my goodness for so many years for 931 episodes I've recorded about this team being not very good at baseball and for this whole season I have been banging this drum banging this refrain that's why I was tweeting at the beginning at each month of hey look where the Rangers are in the standings this is a good team People didn't think this was going to be a good team. They thought they were going to finish fourth in the freaking American League West. They finished second on a tiebreaker and probably should have won the whole dang West. But, hey, you can't look back and say, what if what what if this happened? What if that happened? What, what if, you know, whatever happened? It didn't. It, it worked out the way it did. And I really do think that this is a great thing for the Rangers, winning these first two. They get to set up the rotation mostly like it would have been um, 
of the three starters that you feel really good about going in the first three games against the Baltimore Orioles that are going to be a tough matchup. But now this lineup has confidence. This bullpen is starting to have some confidence. This team has some confidence in itself. There is something real to momentum. I mean, this is the streakiest team in Major League Baseball this year and maybe in the history of ever. I mean, there's a whole lot of history in ever, but like it's hard to feel like there has been a streakier team than this one. And the great thing about the playoffs and winning a World Series is you only have to get streaky for about a month. You think the Rangers got a good month in them? I think they do. I think they are primed and prized to go on a deep run. We have all been hurt many, many times before by watching the Texas Rangers in the playoffs, but this is not that team. This is a different team. I mean, quite literally, this is very different than the ones that have been in the playoffs before. They have such mental fortitude. They have such a belief in themselves, such a belief in their manager, in each other, in their coaching staff, in the front office, in the every freaking bit of this club to say, why the heck can't we win a World Series? A couple of these guys have already won World Series and been huge parts of that. And they know what it takes. And they know that they have what it takes. It is not irrational confidence. It is rational confidence, rational belief at this point of look empirically at the data. This is a good freaking team. This is one of the best teams in baseball. And they're on it. And they're your Texas Rangers. Doesn't that feel good to freaking say? It doesn't mean that it's all going to work out. It doesn't mean that they're going to win every single game from now until the World Series and uh, have a championship parade go ahead and start playing that route. No, but they have a chance, a good freaking chance. And for the first time in a long, 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 long time, the Rangers have won a playoff series and have a hope of winning the whole gosh darn thing. Thank you all so much for joining me today and joining me throughout these playoffs and throughout the offseason because there's going to be a whole lot more Texas Rangers baseball to talk all year round. And I am so freaking excited for the rest of this run. It's not over yet. It is just getting started. Thank you all so much. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy playoff winning Texas Rangers baseball.